from California, or like Orange County. And what are you doing here? I'm trying to catch some home runs. Live in Scottsdale, come out to the Salt River all the time, catch BP, catch some great games. It's exercise, it's just fun. I feel like a kid again when I'm out here ch trying to chase balls now. I don't catch many, but. How, how, how many would you say you've caught? Uh, so far this year, about five in the air. They're the only ones I count. Yeah. Uh, my name's Martin Harvier. I'm the president of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Community Community. And we're here at Salt River Fields, uh, located in our community. Uh, it's the first uh, uh, Major League Baseball stadium that's been built in Indian country. Uh, and you know, we're talking about it. Uh, this season is actually our 10th season. I can't really believe it's been here that long. Uh, you look around, it's still it's a beautiful sight. My name is Dave Dunn. I'm the general manager of Salt River Field at Talking Stick spring training home of the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies. First Major League Baseball facility built on Native American land. Um, we've been open, this is our 10th season, which is about to start. Uh, the first nine seasons are the top nine all time in the history of Major League Baseball as far as spring training goes, one through nine. Um, and we were just named uh, spring training ballpark of the decade by Ballpark Digest. So this is the main stadium right here. Um, it, it, it has 7,000 seats in the bowl, and the lawn holds almost 5,000 people. Um, so we've had 155 sellouts in our nine seasons for spring training games. And then all around, this is the Diamondback side. So we have four uh, minor league workout fields, and two major league workout fields, batting cages, half fields, uh, art agility fields, and then a mirror image down here on the rocky side they have their four minor league workout fields, two major league fields, and each team, their one of their major league fields is the exact replica of their major league uh, year-round season. So this uh, field, so this is an exact replica of the Diamondbacks Stadium at Chase. This is the exact replica of Coors Field um, in Colorado, and then the other major league field is an exact replica, dimension-wise, of the stadium. So um, there's a little bit of thought put into there. Three Acre Lake where uh, we irrigate all our fields from, and that is now where the USS Arizona project is stationed, uh, just, just to the west of our home plate parking lot and where Great Wolf Lodge is right now. The thought was when people are coming to the games, they could park in these areas, but they can also walk through and watch the players work out while they're going to the stadium. So it's kind of like a very up close and experience for the fans as they come to Salt River Fields. Right here, team shop, right here, come on in. Get your team shop. Get your team shop right here. How's spring training going? Oh, listen, another beautiful day right here. Another day at the office. Gotta love spring training. Now this is more like it. There's, there's still a lot of clouds in the sky, but as you can see, the tarp's gone. Crew's out working the field. There's, a, there's a, no rain. It says 0% chance of rain today. So if I was a weatherman looking up at the sky, I would say there's a chance it's pretty great, but I'm gonna trust this time the, the technology that's saying there isn't. So um, this is great. Hope you enjoy. We'll walk around, we'll meet some vendors, we'll talk to some fans, and just bring you here to, to baseball, how baseball is played in the Salt River Fields, Oakland days, and our hometown D-backs going at it today for a season opener. My name is Dale Ray. Basically, I'm here with Safe Working Security. Got me on the third basis. Uh, it's my first time, so I'm excited. So I, I was coming in down the steps, and I I see my friend over here wearing, wearing a baseball helmet, and so right away I know, okay, he he maybe he's maybe a D-backs fan too, but there's something else I want to come and talk. To. So tell me about your your helmet and my helmet. Yeah, hey, this keep my keep my head safe. Make sure no balls hit hit me and. Uh, Hey, I'm looking forward to a good game. <laughs> Me too. What What do you think of spring training? Spring training is, is awesome. We're going to see a lot of people here. 8,000 people should be here today. It's going to be awesome. 
this is exciting. I grew up in Idaho and I always dreamed of coming to a game or whatever. And so right. I imagine, yeah, what's going through some of these little kids' head. Right. Little baseball <laughs> players and such. So good. Okay. Well, keep doing your work. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Baseball has been played in our community for, for many a years. And I know the, the saying when we built the, the stadium was we're bringing baseball back. And I don't think it meant specifically uh, culturally. We played baseball, you know, uh, years ago, but there were games that were played that used a ball and, and, and sticks. And I think the primary message of bringing baseball back was more about bringing families together, you know, bringing uh, an opportunity to bring your family here to enjoy a game to enjoy the company of others that come here. Just to enjoy the excitement of uh, watching Major League players that have been established and those that are just now coming up. So it's really special to have this uh, facility here. And another thing is really hopefully get our members interested in playing the game again. We are in my cluttered, catastrophic office. Um, so basically for my staff and I, um, spring training doesn't start on opening day. It starts about 30, to 40 days prior. Um, both our teams, the D-backs and the Rockies do fantasy camp. Both teams have a lot of major league and minor league players that do off season workouts here. Um, there's a lot that goes into getting ready for spring training. So we're here uh, six days a week after the holidays. And then after Super Bowl Sunday, it's seven days a week till April. So as you can see, it gets a little cluttered in here. Um, we're basically living out of here, uh, out of our offices, but uh, it's a great place to be. And we, we all know what we signed up for and we all love it. So these two individuals, uh, Paul Smith, who is a member of our community, and Terry Enos, who has served in leadership for the ah in the community. Um, in this photo are, are currently the only survivors from this picture here. And, Looks like this was a pitcher that played here in the community from 1950s to the 1970s. So, uh, yeah, that was baseball. They were lucky enough to get uniforms. accountant by training and five years ago I took the next logical step six years ago and I quit my job to sell a food truck that sells pretzels shaped like mustaches so everything is made from scratch rolled by hand and baked fresh right here on site at section 213 um, we're finishing our original which is butter and salt and our cinnamon sugar uh, as well as our all beef pretzel dogs and our uh, you know the dip we're really well known for is our green chili queso uh, which is great with either the original or the pretzel dog magic of television. So why mustaches? Um, I had a few beverages and I thought it would be funny. That's the God's honest truth. I had the idea back in college, but uh, you know, I got an accounting job and it was always just kind of like a bit, like a joke that I would tell co-workers at happy hour and stuff. And then when my wife's job relocated us out here to Arizona, I thought, I gotta leave that job. I got no debt, I got no kids. If it's ever gonna happen, it should happen now. And uh, kind of hard to believe that that was six years ago. And, uh, you know, we've had spots at the convention center, spots at the airport. We have had our food trucks at stadiums and events across the uh, valley. Uh, we did like 100 weddings last year. So keeping busy. We're having a good time. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get these pretzels ready to dip in some butter. Everything's fresh out of the oven and then it's held a temp. Um, served within 30 minutes of baking. So they're just easier to easier to pick up when they're so, upside down. So are you sure you're actually here here cooking these, or you just want a beautiful spot of the, you know? From yeah, I know. This is actually I will say we've worked a lot of crazy places. We've done a lot of you know out of the way school events, and we've we've, we've been in some some rough spots. This ain't bad. <laughs> we have unbuttered pretzels coming your way. Raw any salt on there, sir? Cool. So yeah, we've had a long-running great relationship uh, with the tribe and with the reservation. We've uh, been a part of the Phoenix Rising Games for a couple years now, and we've always been a part of the Street Eats Food Truck Festival. And uh, it's just a great place to do business, man. It's always a good time, always a good crowd. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Come get a pretzel. Great mustaches aren't born. They're bred.
There's a community member, her name is Tweety. She has her, uh, her, her funnel cake type of operation. She's got a tent right out in the right field corner here and um, people line up and it's very authentic. And it's her and her family uh, that, that make the funnel cakes and the uh, fry bread. Um, and it's very, very good. There's a, usually a long line there. Um, and it's, it's so authentic that I don't think you can get that uh, authentic of a fry bread at most ballparks. So it's, it's nice to have her here. She's been here since the beginning with us too. My business name is Tweety's Pima Fry Bread. We're locally owned. We're here from South River community members. Uh, we're the only community member business in the park right now today. Um, we make uh, fry bread. Uh, that is one of our traditional breads that we make and we put all the toppings on that people like the powdered sugar, honey, cinnamon, uh, the famous Indian taco. I know a lot of people call it the Navajo taco, but out here in Salt River, we call it the Indian taco. What about calling it SRPMIC fry bread? So Tweety's tacos, why don't you name it Tweety's tacos? Oh, I couldn't do that. And uh, we started this business probably like, um, probably over 20 years ago and uh, Colorado Rocky fans really enjoy us uh, they miss us we had one guy call us yesterday and said where are you and uh, we have our phone number on our canopy and he actually called it and and he said he gave up a game of golf today to come here and have our fry bread and it was nice meeting him and I'm sure he's gonna be a fan as long as he comes over here <laughs> Talk about a little bit more about fry bread and baseball, how they go together so well. Well, I think that, you know, uh, when you go to the ballpark, you ex expect different kinds of few, uh, food, but I think that's what makes Salt River Fields really unique because uh, we have the true handmade native, they get to taste a part of our culture. And I think it connects with the ball field, bringing it together and you know, showcasing what we have out here in South River as a whole. And we hope that anybody that comes out here will stop by our stand and try the fried bread, all handmade, made to order, nothing is pre-made. So authentic that I don't think you can get that uh, authentic of a fry bread at most ballparks. So it's it's nice to have her here. She's been here since the beginning with us too. <laughs> So we're going down to the field. I'm going to be able to get some shots of the first pitch going out. The veteran, I believe, that's throwing a ball out. That's here, and so here we go. Welcome, guys. Thanks so much for having me. We love you. Let's go there. We're going to practice. Well, have fun today, guys. We'll be cheering for you out there. You're throwing throwing? I'm throwing on balls we have. Yeah, good, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And also, I'm on the, on the most commander for the Bushmaster Hill with yes. community. So. Yeah, I've seen you around here. I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been here for this is our 10th season. I've been here since before we. Here's Bob and Troy that are going to be, Troy's going to be throwing out the first pitch. They're both veterans, they're both local from the community, so it's great to, to be here on the field. On reservation land, they're throwing out a pitch. I think there's a lot of a lot of power going on right here. Retired and SRPMIC member, throwing the first pitch for him. And commander of the Bushmasters, post 114. Touching the first pitch is blank. Oh, my name is Bob Aguilar, and I'm uh, a member of the Salt River Pima Miracle Indian community. I'm also an Navy veteran. Also played a little ball, so you know, it's a big thrill for me to be out here in this, this professional, I guess, ballpark. You know, glad to be here. Glad to be a part of this program. You made it to the big leagues today. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, you know, I made it to the big leagues to throw out the first pitch or have Mr. Troy do it for me. Yes. Shoulder injury. Shoulder, shoulder injury. Uh, uh. Uh, my name is Troy Trix, Jr. I'm on the Wyman Apache Community Tribal member. I'm currently the uh, Bushmasters Post 114 Commander here for the Southern yeah. Community Community. Here. And I played Little League when I was growing up and I was introduced to baseball for my cousin, the late Gregor Wayne Lomayakawa. And through, through Little League, and fortunate to play through, not really middle school, but fortunate to play high school baseball as well. And, and I can 
Well, like today, like today, we made it to the big league finally. <laughs> when I joined the Navy, it was in 1968, and uh, I took my boot camp training in San Diego Naval Training Center, and I played for the Navy Blue Jackets there, also for the baseball team. Um, to get on the team, it was uh, semi-pro players and college players only, not high school. So. I played there a whole year with San Diego Blue Jackets, destroyer for two years, and then uh, my last year I got off in Hawaii to play with the Pearl Harbor Admirals. What well, position? Uh, at third base. Hot uh, corner. Hot <laughs> corner, that's right. So, that's right. It's, it's a thrill to be here in the big league. <laughs> Hi, my name is Technical Sergeant Lisa Semino of the United States Air Force, and I am here to sing your national anthem today. Um, you know, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've been singing professionally most of my life, and I also, at one point in time in my Air Force career, led an Air Force band for a number of years. So this is pretty much second nature. It was um, part of my um, job classification as far as serving. It's something that I continually do as far as the community. Um, at large and um, it's just a great opportunity to be able to use my time and my talent to be able to honor the military as well as support our local teams and to support the community which is what we're all about. Talk a little bit more about that. That's amazing to be able to serve with your talent, your voice. Absolutely. You know, music is, um, is so necessary, it's so needed and it can be utilized in so many ways. I sing to my fellow service members, I sing to community members, even when I have been at, visit hospitals and things like that. Music is the one thing that brings us all together so it's a wonderful thing to be able to use my talent in music to bring people together for those who may not be feeling as well who may be injured it's great for healing it's great to just lift your spirits it's just it's great for the mind body and the spirit so it's wonderful to be able to use my my gifts and my talents to just bring about so much joy and healing and you know it's a sense of community that music brings us all together
Y'all ready? Come on, let's practice, let's go. Pressure, but it's just like I said, good weather, perfect. Good way to start the season off, I think. You want another pitch? Uh, <laughs> no, maybe next year. <laughs> Charlotte and I've been playing softball and my mom's out here and I'm here for the, di the Diamondbacks and I like peanuts so I like peanuts and the Diamondbacks are up to two and the other team is up to zero and I'm really happy because I'm going to be here and I'm really excited for spring training games. I play first base and third base a lot because I'm really good at third base and first base I love like when people throw the ball at me. 
Tell me, what were you doing over here at the fence? I thought you were going to jump over and go play. Is that what you were trying to do, or what was? What were you doing? I was trying to get a ball because when my mom was little, she she waved and they always threw her a ball. So I want to try to get a ball for this game because I already got a ball and I was on TV once um, when my dad saved me from a flying ball. And that I was when the, the St. Louis Cardinals were playing the Diamondbacks. Yeah. yeah. Fresh squeezed lemonade here at Talking Stick. Of course, we got lemons and water and sugar. That's all the ingredients and some ice cubes. So everything's natural. And come get your ice cold lemonade here at Talking Stick. The Mike Insurance Cactus Corner. Yes. Hey, it's Nick. And, uh, I've been here for a while. And it's a good thing because it brings a lot of uh, more people around, I guess, to see a lot of traditions that still run around the res and everything. But, but it's a good thing. So if you notice the, the symbol that was created and, and actually the top symbol with this, the snake, that, was, that uh, was actually created by one of our community members named Royce Manuel. And if you look at the snake, that's for the Arizona Diamondbacks, but it also creates the Rocky Mountains for the Colorado Rockies. So that symbol there uh, was again created by one of our, our community members. And he also on the side there, that's what they refer to as the talking stick or uh, the calendar stick. And that stick in, in our, our history says that there was somebody that always kept a history of important events that happened in our community. And so that's kind of a, a example of some of the things that have happened here. So if you look at uh, some of those things, they represent the golf course that's here, uh, the resort, and then the bottom one there is actually the fields. So that's just kind of an example of, of how uh, those that kept the calendar sticker in history use certain symbols to, uh, I guess, show of things that happened here in the community, kept the history. There's um, all sorts of different uh, museums and things you can go to on, on the tribal land. So um, when people get here and they don't have no idea that it is owned and operated by the Salt River community, they find out quickly. Before every game, we, we put a little uh, video montage up on the board about the community and, uh, and about Salt River Fields and the marriage between the teams and the community. So. Um, I think that's a big important part of making people aware of exactly where they are. If you don't know, you just think you're in Scottsdale, um, but everything on this side of Pima Road belongs to the community. So um, that, that's an important part of what we do too. <laughs> How's popcorn business? Doing pretty well. Sold almost all of it, so. Nice. Good work. Part of baseball, right? <laughs>
name's Carrie Johnson and I work for the Diamondbacks Academy. So we come out and work with the community. We do all things from corporate events. Um, we do work with the kids in the field, game days. Um, we do clinics with the Diamondbacks Academy, coaching clinics. So we just work with kids and share the passion of baseball, coaching them. We want them to learn the Diamondbacks way. Um, we work with the Positive Coaching Alliance. We want coaches and kids, you know, we want triple goal oriented athletes. And so we really are the face of the Diamondbacks with the community, positive interactions with kids and teach them to love the game just like we do. So that's why we're out here today. Oh, Scott River Fields is amazing complex. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a great place to work. Um, it's fan friendly. Um, people love to come out to the ballpark. It's accessible. Um, it's one of the favorites in the valley. And of course, it's our favorite too. It's the home of the Diamondbacks. So um, it's a great facility. Fans are happy. You know, people come out here and just have a good time. Enjoy the game. You know, I, you know I'm not quite sure. The bases maybe look about 20 feet, right? It's accessible for everyone. It's, you know, 12 and under. We have the little kids out here. We want them to have fun, feel the ball on the bat, interact, high fives, and, and make it fun for the kids so it's small enough where everyone can be successful. Um, the kids have fun and just teaching them just the love of the game and a small controlled environment. Our pitches are friendly and you know we make everyone successful. They want to have fun. Yeah. I see some adults I think that are wanting to get in here and yeah. hit so. <laughs> Absolutely. You know it's always fun when the littles come with the parents and the parents want to get on the green take some pictures and get that opportunity they didn't have. These things weren't you know when we were younger we weren't really accessible so this is a great way for children to be at a game and not just sitting but they're watching they're playing um, and enjoy what we enjoy and to share the passion of the sport yeah it's really fun this is really cool seeing seeing this little field that's built um, makes me want to get up and try to hit some out I think I might be able to go deep on this yard I think I left fields about 62 feet um, I could probably take one out so this is fun best job in the world, isn't it? Yeah. Come to the ballpark. <laughs> what was your position or did you play all of them? Well, probably in my mind I thought I could play all of them. <laughs> but right. you know, um, get some pitching and I play in the infield. And, um, I know sometimes you try to get young people involved in the game and they say it's boring. Uh, but you know, when you get into it, there's a lot to the game. There's, uh, I, I had a coach that really taught us about visualizing and just being prepared. And that's part of it. Every you know, pitch, being, right? Every pitch. You just got to be prepared and visualize right. that the ball is going to come to you and what you're going to do. That's the part. You get people on base, where's the ball going? You know, thinking about time, how much time you have to get rid of it if it comes to you. And so there's, it's a thinking game. Yeah. It's not only just you're standing there, you know, out right. there. There's a lot to the game. Yeah, as a kid, I would have never... Ne those words of baseball and boring never no, crossed no. my mind playing. It's always fun. It's <laughs> always fun. Wait, is there certain spot that you're going to sign in? No, you just wait here. So you can
So you come to a baseball game, you've got to get a hot dog. Hot dog and baseball goes together. Is ice cream a hit when it's really hot? Yes. And actually, we've had quite a few customers today. So, you know, people from out of state where it's not as, it's cooler than it is here. So, they like ice cream anytime. Yes. Come get your ice cream. Spring training first game for the Diamondbacks, that's a wrap. Um, thanks Salt River Fields for letting, letting me come. Salt River Indian community, great working with you. Beautiful facility, beautiful people, beautiful game.